we've moved here, viewer, to the uh, frame section of the shop where uh, it'll be explained to us what happens next with the wood that's been brought in. Yeah, so once we've got all our parts made up, and basically the way we operate is we have a guy making parts all the time for us, and then guys building when we're actually right into the building. But uh, once, once we have our parts ready, um, we'll bring one of these frames down. So there's one of these uh, for every model. You could also call them mold, but uh, there's one for every, every different model that we build. And we'll bring these down and uh, we'll set them up uh, in the space over there where I showed you earlier where we were bending the ribs and that. Right. And they'll sit upside down and the ribs will be bent into it, onto that frame. And you can see like people wonder oh, all these marks. That's where the ribs sit and uh, because we drive our nails right through, the nails eventually keep wearing down and then we have to replace these pieces. Oh, I see. As they get worn down, you'll see this one here needs to be, has already been replaced. This one here is getting pretty worn down. Sure. And as they get worn down, we keep replacing these pieces until they, uh, until they're exchanged. Sure. And uh, you've got, by the look of it, you have five different models, Jerry? Uh, these are just our main models. We okay. actually have about 20. Wow. wow, ranging from all the way from smaller canoes to your largest is the Georgian Bay, I think? At uh, Basically our largest boat is the Georgian mm. Bay. We also make a 22 and a and a 20 foot freighter canoe. Wow. They're uh, like the freighter canoes that they use up on the James Bay and whatnot. Wow. So we build those as well. Those are longer, but they're not really much larger than the, right. than the Georgian Bay, although pretty close. But that mold right up on top of there, that's the first model that my grandfather started building. That mold was built in, in the 1920s. For goodness sake. And so we're still using that exact same mold. We Isn't that amazing? It. And We've what changed model is in it, but we haven't changed the mold. What model is that again? That that's the Powassan model. Powassan, okay. Our 16 foot. Okay. And then the next one that he started building is this one here, this 18, Lake Nipissing model. Okay. And they started building that uh, in the 40s, I think. They started building the 18s. And right up until about 55, 56, and that's the only two models they built. Right. Just those two. And at what point can you take the boat off the mold? You, you put well, the ribs in? We put the ribs in, and then we'll start planking almost right away, because the faster you can plank it in, uh, while the ribs are still hot and, and, and steamed, the easier it is to nail them. So we'll nail up the planking as far as we can. That usually takes about a day. And we usually nail up the planking to about here on the mold. Right. Then we roll it over and we have like a hoist over here that you can see. And like the, 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 we'll be sitting here and we roll that over and then we lift the frame up and pull the boat off of it. And then the boat's sitting there and then we put the gunnels in and it moves ahead to the next section up there. And we have two guys up there who are put, put the decks in, the seats in and and do all that work okay. in there. So it's, it is kind of basically an assembly line, but yet at the same time it's not because guys are jumping back and forth. Sometimes if they need a hand up there sure. to do something. It's a flexible there. assembly line. <laughs> it's a flexible assembly line, yeah. It's not quite a, 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 a Ford type assembly line, right. <laughs> but it is basically Which, kind of a same idea, same neat. process of assembly line. And then one Okay, so uh, once we get the boat all put together and it's all fin all built, uh, we come into here and this is where we do all our finishing uh, uh, work in here. So if the boat has to be fiberglass, we will fiberglass it first. Uh, this one here has a fiberglass coating on it here right now. Uh, it's just basically getting finished up. There's still a little bit of paint on it. We did some touch-up paint on it here, so it's a little bit tacky but uh, in spots. But uh, this, is, this is basically what a fiberglass job is. Done. And then once it's fiberglass, then we move it over and uh, that's our spray booth over there. And uh, so if we just kind of go over here a little bit, you can see, and then, and then we'll, uh, we'll varnish it. And uh, the reason we found that fiberglassing it first and then varnishing it works better is that, uh, is that uh, the, is that it's easier if you get the varnish on where you're fiberglassing you got to get the varnish off but if you get uh, a varnish on the fiberglass so you don't have to take it off it kind of oh, hides of it and it actually kind of protects it 
So that's why we do it the opposite way. So this one here, we fire blast, and now I've just finished putting the varnish on. I just finished putting that on just a few minutes ago, so it's pretty tacky yet. But we do all our spraying in this little booth right here. It sucks up all the stuff, takes it out. And, and that's interesting. You use a spraying technique rather than a, a brush or roll-on technique for the varnish, Jerry. It's faster, I guess. Oh, much faster. Yeah. Much faster to spray it on. And, uh, and, and you can get a, a, a nicer finish with the, uh, we're, we're using, uh, like a lot of guys now are using uh, what they call um, high volume, low pressure sprayers, okay. but we're still using a high pressure sprayer, but we're using a newer, uh, a newer version that uh, it's still down and we still run it at 30 pounds PSI, so it doesn't have quite as much overspray. And uh, the reason we do that is because uh, the, the, the low pressure ones, um, it'd be all right in a small boat like this because you could reach across and do it over there like that. But right. on the bigger boats, you can't reach across them, <clears throat> and it's hard to do. Yes. It's hard to spray like this. Sure. So it's easier to spray across like that. So we find that the with the high pressure ones that they'll they'll spray out and across a little bit. So so uh, that's why we didn't switch to that. But I've, I've been threatening to try the other ones, but they. But this, the sprayer puts on a lot nicer uh, coat. You can lay it down pretty nice. Yeah, it certainly seems to have uh, yeah, yeah, smoothed it out. Yeah, pretty nice with the sprayer. And what kind of varnish are you yeah. using at this point, uh, Jerry? We're still using spar varnish. Okay. Uh, we buy it from Selignum Paints. And it's still the, basically the same formula that they've always used. Wow. Uh, it's not uh, water-based. It's uh, still oil-based. Um, they've gone to um, what they call organic thinners, which is basically turpentine. Uh, but the Varsol still still thins it. Okay. But uh, when they're making the paint, they have to use a, a more organic uh, thinner now. Right. It, For which is with environmental reasons, I guess. Yeah. But it, they've managed to uh, to maintain the formula pretty good. Good. Yeah. And you'd put what, maybe two or three, on a new boat, you'd put maybe two or three, three coats? coats is three our coats? minimum. Okay. Uh, most people ask for an extra coat, we put the four coats on. Sure. Once you get over four coats, <clears throat> uh, it, it, you're not, it, it's pretty, you're not gaining a whole lot to get it new. Uh, we recommend that you put a coat of varnish on them every year, like on the sides and, yes. and whatnot. And on the inside, you really don't want to build up a whole lot of varnish on the inside of a boat. Um, the reason is, is uh, your uh, dry rot is the same type of organism that works in a composter. So if you get um, if you get a composting situation in the bottom of your boat, you're going to create dry rot. Mm. So the less varnish that's in the inside of the boat, the better the better it is. Mm. It, uh, it it seems counterintuitive. Yes. But uh, you don't want to let a real build up of varnish come right. inside the boat. Okay. We recommend like we're I'm recommending now, uh, well, I still do, uh, that you wash it out real good with uh, um, uh, borax. Oh. Use a borax solution really? to wash it out. And, um, and wash it out real good in the fall, and then you come back in the spring and put uh, wood preservative on the inside. So we're experimenting right now with a type of wood preservative that the U.S. government is uh, promoting right now. And it's basically borax and boric acid really uh, mixed together goodness and sake. you mix it you can mix it with water or you can mix it with uh, antifreeze for goodness sake and the antifreeze apparently works better it, it, because it sucks into the wood better and so it draws it deeper into the into the wood than the, wow. the water does but um, it's a little harder to mix up and make but they sell it they call it uh, borate uh, timber bore is another one that uh, that they sell down in the states because okay. the states pretty much banned all the other wood preservatives. Too toxic, preserved. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But if you put some type of wood <laughs> preservative in, and like this one seems to be pretty good, uh, we're trying it right now on our own boats. I'm experimenting with it, and it seems to be pretty good. It's it's uh, it's kind of a one one shot mixture though, because once it sits for a day, it all crystallizes inside. Oh, for goodness' right? sake. So. so you got to get it on and get it off. Yeah, well, you, like uh, you can't yeah. once you once you mix it up, you can't really when you 
Can't reuse it. You gotta, well, yeah. you can, but you gotta you gotta heat it up again, okay. and uh, and stir it up real good to reuse it again. And, and once you've it. applied it, then you would rinse it off, would you? No, you, let it, it you just, just let it sit. In. Oh, okay. You just you just spray it on. I use like a little spray bottle. Okay. And you just spray it on the inside and just <laughs> let it soak in. Like the stuff that you buy at the store from uh, that's uh, got the zinc naphthalene in it. It's just like a paint, really, but it's got a fairly strong odor. Okay. And uh, and it's more toxic than than this other borax stuff. But like I said, we're still experimenting. With sure. Borax. Sure. Well, a boat well maintained like this, a cedar strip boat, should last for what at least twenty or thirty years. Oh, well, that's pretty much the average. Yeah. Uh, twenty-five years is about what we figure is about the average. But there's lots of them around that are thirty, forty years, and yeah. and uh, there's even some around that are a hundred years old. Yes. You know, if they're well taken care yeah. of. Yeah. Right. Well, congratulations on the family business, Jerry. There you have it, viewers. This Geezer Boats has been in operation since 1927. And as I mentioned earlier, they must be doing something right to keep building boats on the scale that they're building. Thanks so much for your time, Jerry. Okay, you're welcome. Over and out.